Hello everybody, Jody here at JI Colorist. Today we are going to be tackling a book that is a countdown to Christmas. It is the festive coloring. It features 24 advent windows to color. I recently bought this book off of a book outlet and uh, it is still there uh, for those uh, that want to go online and look. It was about six dollars so it was on a, a good deal and there are 24 pages in here. Uh, the problem is is that they are a lot. Um, there are 24 double spreads in pages. My original thought was to do this as a coloring countdown in December and accomplish uh, basically a page a day which is what I have done the last couple of years. However this is a big book. <laughs> uh, much bigger than I was anticipating. For example, this is a uh, Lulu Mayo book and uh, as you can see it's quite a bit bigger than a Lulu Mayo book and it's also like I mentioned a uh, double page spread for each day. And that my friends is just too much coloring to get accomplished by anybody in one day and have it filmed and edited and up for you. So I still want to do this book, um, but it's going to take me more than just December to get it done. So what I'm going to do is starting today, I am going to tackle a page a week. And uh, so each week I will start, this is page one, and I'm going to focus mainly on the left hand side of the page because that's where the number is and this is always the face of the the building and then inside is on the, the right hand side. So what I think I'm going to do is every week for about a half an hour of video time we are going to look at the page, discuss uh, what's on the page, talk about how I'm going to approach the page, uh, some different mediums that I would like to try on it and do some work. But I'm not going to finish it on camera. It's going to be a work in progress. I'm going to start it with you, then I'm going to go off and finish it on my own. You will not see the completed page until December when you will see the, hopefully, the completed book. But each week you will see me start, discuss the things, and go forward. Now, what I'm going to do is invite you along this with me as a group uh, color along if you would like or a buddy color. Uh, you can do the whole book. You can do a certain page. It's totally up to you. But if you have this festive coloring book already in your stash, then you have the next three months to pull it out, pick one of the pages you want to participate with me in, complete the left hand side of the page, and then email it to me at jicolorist at gmail.com. What I'm going to do is at the end of December, when I am showing you my completed book, I'm also going to show your page as well. So I'm hopefully pretty excited about uh, getting this book done for one thing, but also having it as a group buddy color along. So we are going to start this project today uh, with day number one or store number one. Uh, each week you will see a new episode I will have the episodes numbered uh, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 24. And then again, we will have a completed book with buddy color pages as well in the end of December. I'm not going to show you the uh, completed page. So I'll have this page done, but in my monthly completed pages video, I will not be including these pages. I may include them in my count of pages colored, but I won't be including them. So it'll be a surprise for you. So if you are going to participate in my color along as a buddy colorist, uh, make sure that you, one, add your name to your page so that um, I always make sure that I want to give credit to the people that are buddy coloring with me. And like I said, you can pick one, one page or all of them. It's totally up to you, but you do have some time to uh, get it done. And I'm doing it now because um, as I said, it is a lot of coloring to get done in just one month. And uh, they do look like fun pages and I do want to get uh, this book at least half done. So if I get this page done all the way through to number 24, uh, which 
is just a one page it's only on the left hand side so I thought that that actually worked and the page that I'm always going to do is the front of the store with the number on it so that's the plan let's get to it so I will tell you that this is a book is called festive coloring book it was designed by Simon Parker and illustrated by Pimlada and I cannot pronounce that so I'm gonna zoom you up and it's right here Pimlada Fulpradit Fulpradit I apologize in advance uh, all right so this page number one or storefront number one is the candy factory I'll lower the camera and I'm gonna move my book so that we're just focusing on this side so taking a look at storefront number one it is a candy factory and it uh, has a ribbon up here that says candy factory the one is here and I want to make sure that this uh, the number always really stands out so I want to maybe make this um, uh, sparkly or uh, metallic of some kind so I'm planning this is a double-sided book although this first page is uh, not really double-sided because it's uh, only has this on this side so if I was going to use alcohol markers uh, I would use it on this but I think I will avoid alcohol markers at all cost um, just because this is a double-sided book and at some point I may want to do the opposite page so I'm going to always be working on the left hand side but um, at some point I may want to do those so there's a lot of glass because these are windows um, so that is going to give me some practice on how to do glass and make sure that you're seeing behind the, also this is all the storefront um, and I want to make sure that that is streak free so what I normally do for backgrounds in like with walls and stuff is I use rubbed on gelatos or distressed crayons so I use a lot of those with a brush because they go on very smoothly so I could also uh, do that and then we've got quite a few fine detailed areas and I'm thinking that uh, my Stedler and pig pigment pens and pit artist pens would uh, work well and we've got some bows and stuff I'd like those to be shiny and so I think I may also break out a little bit of uh, glittery gel pens or some metallic watercolors so that's how I'm going to approach that uh, let's go ahead and do the background so let me uh, do a little bit of gelato and then I'll be right back prepping to complete or start this page I'm also trying to think about color schemes and uh, what I do have is the Sarah Renee Clark color cubes so I went and I looked up for a couple of palettes that had candy on it and because uh, I don't want to start I know this is a Christmas page but we are in August and I don't want to be sick of Christmas colors by the time I actually get to Christmas so I'm thinking a candy store uh, while this is uh, ready for Christmas would probably have quite a few of these type of colors on it so I'm going to use this kind of as a as a color palette for the candy store and thinking of that I have pulled out my distress crayons so I have set number five has a bunch of pastel type colors and I also have some brighter colors in set nine and then I have set eight and set ten so we've got a few different ones uh, if those aren't sufficient I do have uh, gelatos but I will think that I will try and use some distress crayons I haven't used these for a little while and I am trying to use up different mediums um, all year long so uh, I think that I will go for that but I think that uh, this color palette number 35 uh, would be a good place to start okay I will uh, grab my brushes and we will start on this project so I have decided that I'm going to start with shaded lilac and even though it's not on here uh, I think that the colors still go with the rest so um, 
when you start with a color palette, you can make a choice of either sticking to it and not varying at all, or you can use it as a guide where you are adding a couple of other colors to make it work for you. So I'm going to go ahead and do the background and I'm going to have to also grab some post-it notes and just mask off some areas. You've seen me do this all the time. So this is just going to be the background uh, color for the building. And it gives it a nice even, so there's no streaking as there would be if I was using some type of pigment uh, brush pen of any kind. And if you over go somewhere, or over a brush, you can just easily erase it. So that's how I'm going to do the background for the building itself. And that's how that'll look. Now I'm going to use a contrast color to do the um, window casing and uh, the candy factory there but I would like maybe to have the candy factory uh, matching the number here in some type of bright uh, fun color so I will go ahead and finish off the purple on my own and you'll see me do a bit more of something else once I get the purple done okay here is how it's looking and I went over the entire face of the uh, candy store uh, with the shaded lilac. And you'll notice that I went right over top of these areas uh, where I went over the uh, casing here, the window casing. I did erase it a little bit, but I'm not concerned about the background because I'm going to uh, go over it once it's dry, either with pencil, uh, gel pen, or um, watercolor paint. I am going to need to wait for it to dry though because this is the distressed crayon so it will activate with water so I do need to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to go ahead and I've started on this and I have not used my acrylic markers very much. I've had them for a couple of years. I have the Artex 30 set so this is the uh, probably I think the A set so long long ago. So I've decided to do the back casing. So let me zoom you down a little bit. So there's like a window casing or some kind of molding behind the window casing here. So I uh, decided to pull out, uh, they don't have names, but it's kind of a light lilac or darker lilac color. And then I was going to use gray, but I thought that melded in too much. I wanted it to stand out a bit more. So I'm gonna use a brown uh, for the window casing. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You can watch a little bit of that. I hope everybody is having a good week. I don't, uh, these are the foam tipped ones. I don't have to shake them, but I don't use them very much. So I'm hoping uh, I get some more use out of some of these different mediums. I hope everyone is having a, a good week. I hope that um, this series gives you a bit more um, realistic view of uh, what it takes to get a uh, day-by-day video series done. It's a lot more work and it's, I think, a little bit unreasonable to uh, show you just every day I pop up a different video in December and you think that that all happened on that day. So this is, in order to get this book done, it's gonna take a, a lot of time and effort. So I hope that you uh, 
If you have the book, come along. And if you don't have the book, just uh, I hope that you spend a little half hour with me every week just uh, getting some own different ideas for uh, things that you could be doing with your coloring books. Okay, I think I'm going to go to the purple for the bottom. Just give it a bit of contrast. The bow I'm definitely going to do um, with a water me metallic watercolors or something. Something shiny. I think that bow just screams shiny. And I think I will do this uh, brown as well. So I'm just going to go over and I'll do the same to those ones. And yeah, so maybe I will finish off a bit more and we'll do one more thing together and then I will leave this and you will see the completed page in December. Okay, but I will switch to brown again. You do need to make sure that you get the marker caps on correctly, nice and snugly, or they'll dry out on you. So. Feels a little bit strange to be coloring uh, Christmas, but Santa doesn't get all his uh, toys done in the the week before Christmas. He's building his workshop and people are shopping already for Christmas now. So I thought, well, I might as well get my Christmas coloring started. So that's what we're going to do. So this is Jody's weekly whip of festive coloring. Nice coverage, so that's good. And I was thinking paint because this is the outside of a building and and uh, you paint outside, so. All right. I think that'll be good. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you have this book or if you uh, plan to uh, pick it up from Book Outlet before it's uh, sold out. I know it's been available for a couple of years and some people did have it last year. So if you haven't finished your book, I hope you pull it out and color along with me. I've decided that uh, in some cases where like here the roof line is going all the way across to the other page that I will complete a few items on this page so that uh, when I do uh, go back um, I don't have to try and uh, match up the um, different mediums that I may or may not have <laughs> in the future so I'm going to do that I'm enjoying these paint markers. I haven't used them much in the past other than trying to uh, get rid of lines which these aren't very opaque so that's not always a great so I'm actually not trying to get rid of the lines I'm just uh, staying within the lines and uh, yeah so you'll have to tell me below um, if you've been using the paint markers what you use them for the most I haven't really jumped on the whole bandwagon with a bunch of different varieties of paint markers. I think I'm still trying to use up my stash this year and so it'll be a good use in this book to try and use up as many items as I can. Okay, I'm going to slide up. Let's do this candy thing here. Um, and I, I do, I like the, the purple and I think it's kind of nice to 
start off the book without having everything being green and gold. Um, so hopefully that uh, that works. I'm going to look to here for a little bit of inspiration for the candy colors. And I did use some of the paint pen for the casings to kind of match a little bit all there. So yeah, happy so far with how it's turning out. Let me go get some uh, watercolors and we'll get the this started. Okay, I have the pearl colors from Calero in the rainbow set. And so it has a really nice purple. Well, it's got quite a few nice colors, but it has a deep purple. It also has a moss green. And uh, I have covered up a lot of this. Um, and there's a bunch of leaves on there. And I thought I could do those in moss green and uh, yeah I thought that would look good and then some of these other accents in the uh, deep purple so we'll do a little bit of that and depending on how that's looking I can decide if I'm gonna carry forward and do that um, use the glittered watercolor on the candy factory um, so yeah so I'm gonna just I'll zoom you down a little bit So we have these leaves here. Or what to look like leaves. Since this is uh, Christmas related, so I'm assuming this is some type of holly leaf or something like that. Using just a tiny paintbrush. I'm hoping to only do one coat. So if you do a heavy enough coat the first time we don't have to go back and do another coat so that's how that will look in order to active pre-activate my um, I just took a little spray bottle and uh, spritzed a little bit of water on it and then I'm taking it straight from the pan and that's how I'm gonna do that keep you in frame. Each week will be a little bit different. Sometimes maybe I'll do some questions. Sometimes we'll just have a nice quiet half hour of coloring and chatting about how to tackle a page. And uh, if you have ideas, share them in the comments below on how you're doing with your book. Yeah, I think that'll look nice. I'm going to do all of the colors, um, the same color, all at once so that I can get, before I have to wash my paintbrush and activate another color. And it's covering up, uh, it's going on top of the Distress Crayon really easily, so uh, no regrets going over that. So, in the past I would have done the Distress Crayon afterwards and I, I'm like, no, I want to get this done first. I will not be playing Christmas music this early in the season, so have no fear about that. 
I just am going to get a head start on these pages so they can be done in time for a Christmas reveal. Okay, I'll keep doing this. I think it's going to look really sparkly when it's done. This will be nice. I'm hoping. All right. That's how that's looking. And I think that I will uh, use some of these other rainbow colors uh, because they go along with the palette 35, but also I think that they look good as uh, shiny candies. So it can, can, can be a decoration. And I might as well do the wreath in the window as well with the same green because it's the same leaf shape. You'll have to comment below if you would like the video uh, sped up or, or if you're okay with uh, the actual speed, the normal speed. Uh, not sped up so I struggle with knowing whether or not to do you know speed things up so it's more interesting and we get more accomplished or if you want to see real time so if you could comment below uh, that would really help me decide how to proceed with this series in particular since it's going to be a half hour of uh, whip so do you want to see as many things as possible in that half hour with sped up video or do you just want casual uh, real time? Okay, let me know. I'd appreciate it. Okay, here is where I'm going to leave you and uh, this is where um, I have gone so far. We have done green and red and purple metallic on some of the things. So I think it's going to uh, look good. I'm happy with it so far. Uh, I'm going to bring in some gold probably. And uh, yeah, so I've done the bow. I started it in red down here and I think I'm going to bring in gold uh, to accent it. So yeah, that's where I'm going to leave you today and I will see you for the next session which we will be working on day two so window number two which is the gift gallery so that's where i'm going to leave you until next time i hope you are having a creative and colorful week and i will see you in the next video take care bye bye <music>